Now we're going to talk about the condition category, internal chronic pain. What that means that the foot hurts no matter what, whether it's wearing shoes or not wearing shoes. And it's often to do with osteoarthritis, say in a joint like this big toe joint here, or in the ankle joint. Remember, this is going back and forth as you walk, but also at heel lift, this toe has to bend. And uh, so that kind of pain is not caused by the shoe. And it doesn't matter uh, what you do with the shoe, uh, it's not causing that pain. However, you can make a shoe that relieves that pain. Okay, so this is just how bad it can get. You can see here's a, the bunions and the hallux. The big toe is actually underriding the second toes. But it actually needn't be that bad to be a real problem. You can have somebody that's a really keen walker that has gradually developed osteoarthritis in his big toe joint or even gout. This is the most common site of gout, um, which puts uh, uric acid crystals in the joint and makes it extremely painful and, if not treated, can damage this joint. So you sometimes you see quite a, a swollen, bony mass there. And so the chronic internal pain, let's just talk about it in the toe joint, is when any movement of that toe is just excruciatingly painful. So how can we stop that? Well, the way to stop it is to make a shoe that enables the person to walk without this toe joint having to bend. So, uh, as a sideline to that, we can also throw in, this is a solution for the prosthetic foot. Here we have the prosthetic foot. It's a, a rubber uh, foot-like shape, but it's actually on top of a metal uh, plate, which is attached to uh, some uh, very smart rods that go into uh, what's called a, a, a flower pot with the, where the stump sits. So you can imagine if you're a, wearing a prosthetic leg, and it, particularly if it's above the knee, you, you're not aware of anything. You're aware of the stump inside the flower pot, but you're not aware of where the ground is and how you're walking. So it's really important to create a sole and a heel that enables that very rigid foot to uh, walk in such a way that it's smooth, it's not jarring you, and yet at the same time you're getting enough feedback through the stump to know where the ground is. Similarly, a lot of surgeries, there's one called the triple arthrodesis, and it's triple in the sense that it's, it's restricting up and down, side to side, and twisting. The, the, the actual ankle becomes fused. There's another operation where the big toe joint becomes fused. And these, uh, although the foot is no longer painful because it's fixed, you can get very hard tissue under the end of the toe as you toe off, and it can make the gait very, very clumpy. So uh, what we've got to do is make a shoe or a boot that's very stiff, so that the toe doesn't bend, but also facilitates the gait cycle so you can land, roll in, go through the motion and toe off without uh, compromising the gait and without uh, forcing that toe to bend. Okay, so let's look at what happens when we walk in a normal shoe or a shoe like this. I've taken this because it's got a very early strike and it's a very firm heel. So you imagine here's the leg it's coming through, the heel strikes the ground, and the pressure of the leg forces it to slap. And the only thing that stops that happening is the, the front compartment muscles in the leg lowering it. And you know that feeling when you get very tired. You, you can hear your, it's in the gait, your foot slaps. And um, you get shin splints or the same thing. So um, with you've, when you've got arthritis in your ankle or an arthritis in your toe, for it to bend like that or to come down like that is excruciatingly painful. What's the solution? Well, here we have an ankle joint. And although the ankle joint is sitting on top of the talus, it actually has a still point around which the uh, ankle pivots. So the uh, idea is to take the center and create the radius here for the heel. So what happens now, as the heel strikes, it doesn't get any closer to the ground because the radius is the same to the pivot. So it smoothly lowers to the ground. Once the front of the foot comes in touch with the ground, 
you then create a curve that's the radius of your leg. So it goes from the hip joint uh, down to the ground, creates a smooth curve. And that creates like a little wheel segment, a segment of a, of a car tire, if you like. So the foot literally rolls without the foot having to move. You've actually gone across a wheel segment. And then at heel lift, you have to increase it so that the toe isn't forced to bend. You know, it's no longer sufficient to have the radius of your hip. Then you have another radius, again, coming from the pivot point of the ankle under the toe, which allows the toe to roll off. Now your motion is, instead of foot slap, the foot comes down, it lands on a radius that's the same as the pivot of the ankle, it lowers smoothly, it then you roll across a wheel segment, and as the heel lifts, it actually tips, and then you can come off, and nothing as uh, no none of the joints have moved. So again, this is the what we use for a prosthetic foot, and we've done quite a number of those, and for a fused ankle, and uh, again for the prosthetic foot, it's. Uh, usually designed for a trainer, you know, and, and, you know, many people are very happy to run around in trainers. Some people do it voluntary, um, and trainers work really well with prosthetic feet. But if somebody with a prosthetic might want to have a, 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 a job in a bank or in an office or somewhere where they have to be dressed up well, or they might want to go out into uh, dress situations where a trainer is just a big no-no. So it's very difficult to get, say, an Oxford shoe or a really nice uh, dress, you know, ladies' shoe that actually looks presentable in those situations. And so again, we create these, uh, these three principles of the rolled strike, the round bottom, and the rolled toe-off to create uh, the ideal uh, environment for the prosthetic to work. Now, going back to the arthritic toe, it's absolutely crucial that this foot does not bend. And we've got a very slight bend if I go really strongly on that, and that's so enough for most people. But some people, it has to be so rigid that when we're building the shoe uh, underneath the, before we put the sole on, we actually fill it with carbon fiber. So we put the, the liquid epoxy in, sheets of carbon fiber weave, more epoxy, maybe up to four or five, depending on the strength. Some people want it absolutely rigid, so you couldn't bend it if I pushed as hard as I could. Others people like just a little bit of flex. But once you've achieved that, an absolute stiffness, then somebody who, you know, would be in severe pain just getting up to go to the loo at night and, you know, finds excruciating pain with every step, um, you puts on a pair of your shoes and they can walk 30 miles. And you've changed somebody's life just by knowing these three principles.